Welcome back. Today we're heading over to Telford, going to the Napit Training Centre so I can complete my EV charging course. I thought it would be good to learn a bit more about car chargers, especially as I'm doing so much. Um, mainly around the fault side and all the different products out there. So I thought it's definitely wise getting the seating guilds, ticking the box as such, by my name. Um, and then I've also booked on with Napit for my 2391 testing and inspecting. Uh, so it's 2391 and there's three, two or three different variants. I think I've gone for the Dash 52 variant or 53 one. So I've got that coming up next month. So I'm trying to get all my additional courses done and out of the way whilst I'm young and still fresh out of college. So then it's all still fresh in the mind, roughly what I think would be the answer. Whereas say if I left it like three or four years, then I come to do my 2391 and I might think, oh God, I've got to relearn all this. So I'd rather just get it all done. So we're heading over to Napit. Napit themselves are like the governing body, one of the governing bodies as such for the electrical industry, plumbing and all that. So they're really good and they offer training courses as well. So this training course today, it's a two day course. So I'm here today, I'm here tomorrow. I'm going to document that journey and see what I think of this course. Obviously I can't take you in the classroom and say, oh look, answer A was 46 or something i can't do that or i can't take you in there and say look this is a classroom environment because there's going to be people in there that aren't going to want to be filmed they aren't going to want some idiot going in there with a camera and it's just not the dumb thing you don't really film tests but i can come back talk to you guys explain how we got on and say do i think this course is worth it and then also I can do the same with 2391 because ultimately 2391 is a big thing for a lot of sparkies because it gives you that approved electrician status. Um, so once you've been, I think it's once you've been qualified for more than two years and then you can technically apply for it, but I don't think they like to give it you. So then you have to have your 2391 and at least two years of experience and then they'll give you your approved status. So then if you're working down London and you're on like JIB rates, you get a higher rate of pay. So it's definitely worthwhile investing in these courses. So if you do want to look at any of these courses, I'll put the link to Napit Training below where you can have a look. They hold these courses all around the country. So I'm doing my 2391 up in Mansfield next month. I'm going to Telford today. So they've got centres all over the country. End of the day, I've come out. We've had some breaks in between. Uh, overall, the experience today was really good. Hospitality was good as well. Yeah, really nice. Obviously, like coffee breaks, stuff like that. Coffee's all included, cans of Coke, um, bit of lunch. There was some sandwiches, sausage rolls, bit of chicken. It was a bit of everything, to be fair. So it was really, like the hospitality and all the staff were really nice. So that's always good. Really easy going. And I just say how it is, as you'll know. So when we got into the more technical stuff, I'm like, even though I've only just got a college, some things I'm like, Oh my God, I'm an idiot. So I was just asking questions and they were more than helpful. So they've given us homework for tonight, ready for tomorrow, all the tests. So yeah, basically what the big deal is revising for and remembering all the different calcs. Well, it's open book exam, but it's remembering, it's a bit like your 18th edition, remembering where to find what equations, what tables. So then you've only got, I think it's a certain time limit to do this test. And obviously, if you spend all day flicking around trying to find a table, then you're not going to do it, really. So tonight, I'm not going to do anything apart from watch those videos and practice some calculation, like cable designs. Um, so today, I was given like a sheet, and it says like a run for an EV charger is 19 metres. says if whether it's disclosed in a wall, conduit, all that. So you need to obviously factor in all that. And then it's like, how did you get this value? How do you work out this? And then you've got to like disclose what table you're looking at, what book, everything. So yeah, when you've not done it for about coming on onto a year, it's uh, yeah, it's a lot of work when you're trying to figure out all this. But that's part of being an electrician, eh? It's not just working with your hands and stuff like that. It's a lot of brains and a lot of thinking, which sadly I hate. But luckily. The training providers are pretty sound and they um, have guided me through it. So fingers crossed I should be all right, but I'm definitely going to have to do a bit of learning tonight. I'm back home now, but before I go inside and do hours of revision, because I need to scratch up on a few things, 
Uh, I forgot to say exactly what the course is I'm doing, so I'm just going to read it off now. So it's a level three award in design and installation of domestic and small commercial electric vehicle charging installations. And then in brackets, the numbers, the City and Guild numbers are 2921-31. So that's the course I'm currently on. It's a two day course with NAPIT themselves. And a bit about the course. So today what we've done is turned up, they've... Um, ran through the basis of what the course is going to contain which i'm going to tell you guys now so today has been a lot of reading through the ev charging like guidance book as such a bit like the regs book for ev reading through that figuring out what's what what the key points are however this book on a bit of a tangent here this book is a little bit outdated because pen fault devices weren't as common when this come out so it's due an upgrade but for the purpose of me going through this course and other people that want a book on this course, you follow the book and obviously learn about the book, all the done things and how you go about that, installing an EV charger in domestic property mainly because a lot of it is based off domestic. And then obviously then once you get into commercial stuff, it's either like DC stuff or your bigger 22 kilowatt chargers typically as such or obviously you can just have multiple 7 or 7.2 kilowatt chargers so you run through the generic basis of what's going on in the book and then we had a little break so we had a little break in the first couple hours just grab a coffee and that and then um get to know each other a bit and then obviously then from that we carried on with the book obviously learning from the tutor reading out the book covering each segment and then from that we went for lunch and then after lunch, we come back. And so part of this exam the, is tomorrow, what we'll be sitting is a written paper exam and then also a multiple choice online exam on the laptops. So that's tomorrow. But however, what we finished off this afternoon was... Bleh, what we finished... I can't speak because I've been too... My mind is boggled. So what we finished off this afternoon after lunch was the written paper. So we did like a mock test style question of that so it's basically you get given a photo with a little bit of the specs so a ev charger fitted a certain distance away how the cable is going to be ran and obviously you have to figure out all the different reference methods we're using the on-site guide guidance note 3 bs761 wiring regs um just using all the books and doing a cable calc for it, what cable suited, figuring out the K values. There's loads which I need to scratch up on tonight. It's good the way they show it, but then it's like, it's a lot to take on, even though I've only just done it all. But it's just naturally all tradesmen don't like paperwork and stuff like that. So it's just one of them. You just got to suck it up, do your revision, and hopefully, fingers crossed, pass tomorrow. Big fingers crossed. It's the next morning, we're in the van, ready to head over to Telford for day two on the EV charging course with NAPIT themselves. So last night I was up till probably about half 11, revising, um, doing all the cable calc, looking through the big brown book, which is an absolute joy, um, and the on-site guide and guidance notes free, and then also the EV charging book. And what I was doing is mainly the big brown book as such, BS761, um remembering where all the handy little things are so it's an open book exam but you just got to remember where like table 4d5 is um the k values to do your cable calcs the um mega ohms values of cables um optimum temperatures all them different graphs and tables and stuff like that. You just got to remember what page they're on and all that. Luckily, I've got the study stickers, which are like the stickers that go all the way down the side, which give you what appendix is what and what chapter you're on and all that. But then I made some custom ones just for this test as such, saying like, oh, this is table about K values. Oh, this is the table. This is the page about volt drop. So fingers crossed you're allowed to do that. Just on the way there, and I don't know what's happened, but we seem to have taken a bit of a detour up. Yeah. Most of the videos, we end up here. Oh well. It's the Friday afternoon, and we've come out of the exams. So I've got the results to one exam. So there's two exams. You've got your written-based one, which is like your cable calcs um, for an EV install, just showing off what you need all the different cave actors, the, yeah, loads, just all your cable calculations and that. 
quite in depth. I did have to scratch up a lot on that last night. Remember the formulas. Obviously, it's all open book, so you can refer back to the formulas in the BS761, your on site guide, guidance note three, and the EV charging book. So that's one test. And then that one, I don't get the results until Monday. So fingers crossed until Monday. The second test you carry out is the online one. So on the laptops, literally multiple choice. There's four answers for each one. You Normally you can 50-50 eliminate two out of the way because they're like a bit, yeah, no, no goers. And then you're left with a 50-50 again of... It could be that one, or it could be that one, and you have a bit of a think, and you go, uh, that one. Obviously, a lot of them I did know. Or you just read the book, refer back to the book, and then you get it. So, we got to pass on that one. So, I'll just show you. Yeah, there's nothing too revealing on there. So, we got a pass, and then the pass rate I got. So, I got overall pass rate of 85.71%. So... In my eyes, as long as you get a tick in the box, a pass, I'm happy with that. And most tradesmen probably will be. There's probably some of you out there um, who love revising and stuff like that, which that's fine. And you aim for a 100% pass. Well, everyone aims for a 100% pass. But in my eyes, as long as I pass, I'm more than happy with that. So that's jobs are good and fingers crossed till Monday. Overall, so the two days with Napit themselves at the training centre, um, hospitality great. Tea, coffee, coke, water, diet coke, anything, all there, anytime. Obviously, toilets. Um, what else was there? They're at lunchtime, so they've got a catering company to come in. Selection of sandwiches, sausage rolls, chicken, quiches, um, pudding, strawberries, fruit, everything was there. Really nice, really. So it's like just coming out of your test after like frying your brain and then coming out and just having something nice to eat have an half hour and then going back into it and learning and the assessor himself lovely chap and very knowledgeable so overall i'm um, really happy with the experience of the napit training courses so that's why i've booked on the 2391 with themselves next month i knew i was doing that anyway and then in the pipeline some solar and battery storage courses and you might see me and Nick on that together. So fingers crossed, that'll be a good course for us to learn a lot. And uh, yeah, we'll both have to do a lot of revising for that one, but we'll wait till Monday and see how we got on. The dreaded Monday results day for the EV charging course. So overall, how did we do? Pass the online exam, that was all right. Overall, the course felt it was going good. And then the written paper, so then we were left with task A and task B. Task A was more of the questions, and that was out of total, um, I've written it down on my phone, so that was out of a total of 24 marks. And then task B, which was the written calculation one, that was out of 32 marks. And I got task A, 11 marks, task B, 23 marks, so a total of 34, and they reckon the pass mark is roughly 40. So... Yeah, I was quite a bit off, but hey-ho, I'll just have to rebook in and redo the written paper. So fingers crossed, I'm going to do a lot more revision this time, get it booked in. I've learnt a few more bits and bobs, but ultimately I've got nothing to hide. I'm happy to come on here and say, look, hold my hands up. It's nothing to do with the training course or anything like that. It's, it's me at the end of the day. Um, so yeah, you win some, you lose some. Um, I've just probably had a bit of a wobbler on the day. I messed up my calculations. So I'll have to be a bit more strict next time, do a lot more revision, and then fingers crossed, get a pass.